Hey everyone, welcome back to Build Tune Race. We're getting ready for Texas 2K. We got the shocks on in the last video, just finished all that stuff up. And now we got a few more things to do. AJ's been nut and bolting the car to make sure everything's safe to go. We found a lot of loose nuts, so make sure before you go race for the season you do that. And then we also got this new belly pan. So, I actually had a diaper on the car, it got all torn up. You guys can even see where the tranny blankets can start to get torn up a little bit up there. But it's still decent, but uh, now with the car raised up with the new shocks, it'll be a little bit better. But this thing is super sick. So I'm gonna put it down and show you guys. AJ will do the, uh, the honors, bang. But uh, so this is a Vasco Speed belly pan that's specifically built for an F body that has a BMR tubular K member in it. So this car has a BMR tubular K member, luckily. And then as he'll show you, set it up there, something about like so. Yeah, and look how nice that is. This is going to be super sweet. Uh, not holding heat on the engine anymore. Kind of easier to access. Four bolts. So what you get is you get the belly pan. And you get four of these little mounts. You get two mounts like this. And two straight mounts like this. So we are going to go ahead and mark where that sits up on the frame here. Which is going to be somewhere right, I think, back in here. And somewhere right in here. Let's see. Give me back here by the. There, go in there. Right in that area. So, somewhere, I'm not sure if I'll need to notch that a little bit. So, we need this to come up and sit here. And then we got this here. So, I'll come off with a bracket right there and go to there. And then we'll come back and drill the holes here and here once we get the little mount and everything. So, we're going to take a second. We might even, this might even bend up a little bit. I think it's just kind of sitting there ready to go and getting ready to go on so we'll look at this side too it looks like it's got to rotate up in there a little bit but we'll figure out exactly how it needs to look and we're going to get that thing on there and then i also need to reseal the valley cover on it just do a handful of things get this thing fired up and ready to go to texas 2k so we're going to get to work on this stuff uh it cleaned up here there there and there so we're going to get them tacked on kind of like this plate goes like so I'm going to favor these down just a little bit because my belly pan touches just right here on the back. So we want to get it where it's at right there. Put one like right there where AJ is at. And then what's nice is they send you this with kind of this whole area to drill your hole. And then you can kind of adjust your hole on this one too right there. So we're going to get some things tacked on. Hold that back up in there and maybe make some marks and drill some holes. So I tacked some spots already in there. Didn't love it because this is really tight in the K member, so I actually went ahead and favored this up as much as possible. We put it up in there, measured how far the brackets need to come out, so hopefully we're pretty good, and then the welding will do the rest. So we went ahead and bolted it on here, and then these we will need to mark up in the car, but hopefully these we can actually set it up in there because we, we kind of guessed where we thought it would be, and it was actually hitting the thickness of this bracket. So um, it's pretty tight in there, not super forgiving on this piece, so... We're gonna put it up in there and see if I can tack it while he holds the pan. We got it fit. It was a little bit more. We also got Bernie in here. How you doing? But uh, so looking at theirs and looking at mine, I have a little bit different steering rack. So I had to make a little access hole for steering rack and clearance it a little bit around here. But otherwise we're looking pretty good. I got everything tacked in. We got our bolts in. I just need to finish welding and then I'm gonna come back and cut off the excess bracket for where that sat and just a little bit on that side. So. Otherwise, it's looking pretty dang good and a whole lot better than having a diaper on this thing. So, pretty cool. I'll be back tomorrow to do some more. Here it is, all installed. Even got the pig mat kind of sticking out right there, but everything is good. Got our bolts in each one. Cleaned up and actually cut this little lip off just because it was down a little bit further than I wanted on this side. This side lined up really good, but it's literally touching the pan right here. And there's, oh, about a three-quarter inch gap to the front of the pan as it kind of goes up and slopes. So I think everything looks really good. It's really close to the bottom of the transmission. And let's look at it from here. Kind of continues that slope from the tranny down. The lowest point is right in line with the wheels, which isn't as big of a deal because more or less the rim would have to touch for that to touch so and we hope that doesn't happen but definitely shout out to the guys over at vasco speed this thing was super nice and way easier to just do a couple little modifications to make it fit my combo than have to build a whole belly pan and way nicer 
to just throw four bolts in it than trying to like strap a diaper to the engine. So shout out to those guys, super cool product. Let's go and get the car down and fix that valley cover leak. And as you guys can see, if you kind of look closely, it's really dirty under the intake and stuff right through here. What it's been doing is actually pushing some fluid back. Uh, you can't quite see, it's kind of dried up a little bit now, but there's actually a little bit of standing oil back here on the valley cover. I don't think that plate's getting sealed completely. These like Allen type screws are hard to get tight I, and I stripped one or two already. So what I'm gonna do is pull this whole thing apart and actually put bolts on it and fix it hopefully right and get this thing sealed up. So we quit losing oil out of there, making the engine bay a mess. And then also goes back, hits the firewall, drains down, leaves drips, makes the underside of the car mess. So just a little bit of maintenance before we get started with the season. Run all your wires underneath the intake, they said. Well, it's a big old mess when you go to do it, but let it, left everything there, kind of taped off so nothing would fall down in the cylinders while I do this. But you guys can see, look at all the oil. So I think some of it's the sensor not sealing, but then some of it, it looks like it could be coming from right here. It kind of piles up there. So I'm going to try to get that valley cover off, get some new bolts. And it was a brand new seal, but maybe you replace the seal. We'll see how it looks. And bam, looking down in there, that's uh, pretty decent. And we got the cover off, so out with the old crappy bolts that wanted to strip and I couldn't get torqued down the way I wanted. And then I went with these nice new flange bolts that will be going on the tray. And then I went ahead and picked up at O'Reilly a new gasket. This one looks fine, but I figured we've came this far, we might as well put a new gasket in it. Hopefully when it goes back together, we don't have any oil going out the back, making a big mess in the engine bay, getting on the firewall, getting on the transmission, getting underneath the car. It's making a big old mess, dripping in the garage, all that stuff. So gonna get the flange area cleaned up a little bit and then go ahead and put it on there. There we go, new valley cover on, new gasket, new bolts, all that for a little oil leak that was being a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna call it a night there, then I'll come back over, get all the lines back over, kind of clean them up and start reinstalling everything with the intake. All right, everyone, so I'm back over here finishing up things. Got just a couple little things, got the intake back on it and all that. I'll show you guys that here in a minute. But I was under the car doing the oil change, and this is the reason why you go over nut and bolt in your car. And for everything that I did, it was well worth doing all these things for this reason right here. This is pretty crazy. So I was under the car just looking at things, and I was trying to figure out, you know, just checking nuts and bolts and all of that stuff. And, you know, it, it everything's kind of oily right around here. Then I went and put a, look at this. Crazy, both front oil pan bolts super loose, which probably means maybe just those for the most part. Somehow just those maybe were crazy, crazy loose. I can see oil coming out of the front of it. I knew that there was some oil kind of up around the rack and stuff. What's really weird though is if I didn't swap the engine blanket over to the engine pan, I would have never caught that unless I completely took the diaper off, checked everything there, but why would you, you know, type of a thing? Because it's on there and everything was torqued and bolted. Pretty big catch right there that I was getting ready to probably go 180 plus mile an hour down at Texas 2K, and the front oil pan bolts were loose and could have kicked a bunch of oil out of it. So, super scary. This is where you slow down. You take time to come over. You look at your car over a few days even, nut and bolt everything, look at everything twice and hopefully catch things like that. Got it all down, everything's looking pretty good. Got the intake back on it. And now I'm working on putting some fresh plugs in this thing so it's ready for all the boost. We got everything pretty good. It's time to fire the beast up. Well, check for leaks first and then fire it up. See if everything's good to go. Forgot one important part. And now it's plugging the ECU back in since I unplugged it for when we were welding on the car. All right, let's try that again. Hey, I got dash. Sounds like we got fuel pressure. I don't see anything leaking, so that's a good sign. I think I did it again. Or I forgot to plug the oil pressure sensor on. Yep. Dang it. I hate when I do that. It's better to 
know for a fact we got oil pressure than assuming that we got oil pressure, so. All right, let's try that again. Hopefully she fires up again, because oh, it's gonna be a little cold. Everything seemed good, though. Yep, now she's mad. Big mad. Getting it sanded down. Hopefully, we can get this thing painted up. A little rough, but not too bad. A couple of spots on here. We originally hit it with like probably, I don't know, like 80 or if it wasn't 120, it was super rough. Uh, so, he's helped me kind of clean everything up, straighten it out. So, it looks halfway decent when it's painted, right? Yeah, we blocked it out real quick with like 220. Now, I'm just kind of buzzing it down with the, with the DA. Kind of blend everything together you know and uh the hood's pretty thin so doing a bunch of body work on it and making it like perfect yeah really gonna, and honestly the race car things pretty straight as it is like you guys blocked it with you guys sanded it with 80 and just like a dewalt like da thing and so but when we blocked it out everything looks pretty straight and so as i'm going along with this i'm pretty much getting all the 80 grit scratches out because there's enough of a coating on here so I don't think we really need to do a thick coat of primer on it. Maybe just uh, just a quick one. Yeah. Maybe like wet sand with 400 and it'll be it'll be ready to go. Ooh. I was almost debating on we might not even need to reprime it. Yeah. Because it seems like it's sanding out all of the scratches and stuff pretty good. But once uh, once I've done da it real quick, we'll uh, kind of we'll clean it. We'll blow it off, look at it, and see. Because we might be able to just spray it. Maybe we can put a coat of sealer on it kind of fill them scratches Ooh. a little bit more and then put the single stage on. Send it. Well, and the single stage too is going to be a lot more forgiving than... Yeah, because this thing's going to be on and off the car and getting kind of beat up and in and out of the trailer and every round we got to take this thing off the car, pretty yeah. much. It doesn't have to be a showpiece. No, no, but it would be nice if it looked decent. It's, it's gone. Heck it's yeah. Gone. Like if we painted it right now, it would look great. So, <laughs> maybe we'll see. Got the hood in here. It's looking pretty good. I think we're going to prime this thing. While he primed some of the parts off the Kia Stinger he bought for, at an auction that he's repairing. But otherwise looking pretty decent. See how it comes out. Trev's in there laying some primer on the hood. Well, it looks pretty good. Not too bad. What do you think? Not bad. Not bad. Not perfect, but not bad. It's a used hood anyway, but I mean, it's, it's going to be a lot better white. Especially for how I was really impressed with See how you, buddy. Bye. Uh, I was impressed with how straight this fiberglass is. A lot of times it's like really ripply, mm -hmm. maybe, and this is overall pretty straight. So it's gonna be good. There's another one of those little stress things right there too. Yeah, there's a couple like for some reason. Eh, you guys probably can't see it. You can almost see it, right? Yeah, right there. You guys can see it. Right there. Yep. And, um, it's like a little stress crack in the fiberglass that is probably just there. So. You'll get that with fiberglass, huh? You will get that with fiberglass. All right, everyone. So shout out to Trevor for helping me knock out the hood on this thing. It looks awesome. It came out pretty sweet and it's already dirty and it got a few scratches on it from racing down at Texas 2K. Just want to outro this video. Make sure you guys come back tomorrow for all the action from Texas 2K. It's going to be a pretty amazing one. We'll see you guys later.